Okay, so in this video, I want to show you how these jump to subroutine works in Logic Pro. Okay, and this is pretty similar to what we do in RS Logics 500 with a couple of little differences that I'll walk you through. Okay, so basically I have a quick start stop station set up here to a, uh, to a B3, which I will use to first control my jump to subroutine. All right, the jump to subroutine is located in the program control bin. So we'll click on here. And this is the JRS, okay? The jump to subroutine. And I'm gonna bring that down to here. Now in Logic Pro, I can come here and I will just call this trial run, okay? All right, just to give us an idea. And this, this one has an input instruction, but it is not required by any means, okay? Now Logic Pro actually gives us the jump to subroutine down here. So if I click here, this will bring up a subroutine, which I've already put some things in, some, you know, just a input tied to a corresponding output. But typically a subroutine looks like just blank, okay? Now in RS Logix 500, this would not be given. You would have to create it. And to do that, you would go over to your project tree and expand out your program files and right click. And when you right click, it would say, create a new subroutine. And then you would identify the address and the name. We're just gonna use U3 here. U colon three is how that is identified, okay? So we'll go ahead and go back to our IO simulator. Now we're gonna to go to our subroutine. And there's a couple things we have to add before we can get started. The first thing is we need to add the subroutine instruction right here, okay? This will tell that this is a subroutine. It has the address so it knows where it's jumping to. And we need to put a return. The return should be the last line before the end line here okay, um, with the same address. This will tell it to jump back to the subroutine. In RS Logics 500, this isn't necessarily required. It is recommended though, okay? For a basic program, it's not needed, but it's good to have, okay? Note, anything below this return will never be scanned, okay? So let's go ahead and go back to here and let's download, come over here, download, put it into run mode. All right, so we're gonna stop this. We're gonna deactivate all of these. Okay, we're gonna hit the start button. This activates the B3, which runs over to my U3. Now my four here, that works whether my subroutine is on or not, okay? So I'll activate it. My, my B3 is running. So remember, if I hit this, it stops the subroutine from being scanned. If I do this, it starts. So I'll come over to my subroutine. If I activate this, notice that it is not turning, notice that it is now activating because my subroutine is on. So I can activate these, this here and five. Okay, now I'm gonna stop it. Now notice three can go true, but the outputs won't. They're not being scanned. So you have to understand how this works. And let me explain why, okay? I'm gonna start my subroutine up again. And you can see that it's running because this is started and I activate this, they turn on. Now let's say I have a switch on my subroutine which controls when we jump to the subroutine. And the switch is running and everything's going good. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna deactivate my subroutine. So I hit the stop button so my subroutine is deactivated. You can see it's not yellow here. Look what happens when I deactivate these switches. Notice my output is still true. This is a problem with subroutines for people who aren't familiar with them. This can cause some major havoc because those, are, there's no way to turn those off. There's no way to turn those off now unless you come in, restart your subroutine, okay? And then I can get my control back. All right, so if you're gonna have a subroutine with an input that jumps to a subroutine, be very, very clear about when it's gonna be turned on and off, especially if you're doing it automatically, okay? Now, one of my favorite things to do with a subroutine is to clean up a busy program. 
So you can have a subroutine with no inputs that's just being scanned all the time. It's just a normal part of your program, but it's shoved into a subroutine. The advantage to this is that it declutters your main routine. So let's say I'm counting product and, it ha and that counting product has no control over my process. It's just data collection, right? Or I'm controlling uh, some outputs um, like pilot lights. Okay, that don't, if they were to go out, the machine would still run fine. Okay, I may want to put those in a subroutine. Okay, or even more importantly, a lot of, yeah, that, that's a perfect example of where, when we would want to do that. Okay, so let me show you how that works. So I'm going to go offline. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a, another jump to subroutine. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to make this four, enter. I'm going to come to four and I'm going to pause this so I can build out my counter rope. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and download this. And now four is going to be true all the time. Notice I can start and I can stop when I'm jumping to this. But when I'm going to four, let's see what's going on in there. So I come over to four and what I have is a counter here that I've tied to this input. Okay, and this will just always count product, whatever that product happens to be. Okay, I can come here, I can reset it, and nothing I can do in my main routine is going to affect this. Okay, all right, so I can come back to my main routine here, and it's just running, it's just a place to put things. This is such a powerful tool. As you learn and your programs expand, the machines you work on, or get larger and larger. Data organization for logic organization is so very important, okay? And this is one of the key tricks you can do to simplify a program down is to take advantage of subroutines like this, okay? Where you can just data collect here, okay? Notice it worked and I didn't put the subroutine in the return down, okay? And you can also do things like this subroutine right here where you can make decisions based off of things. Let's say this is a, a really good example of where you'd want to use a subroutine is on a warning system. Now, let's say a product falls off and you have a way to sense that, okay? Well, the idea is, is that products shouldn't fall off of a line very often, okay? But when it does, it's very important. So you can set up some things in your routine that can actually turn on a subroutine. Boom, turn on a subroutine, and then that can actually say, start a warning light or do something, okay? And then, because we don't want to be wasting our scan with something that should never, ever happen, okay? Unless something bad's happened. So anyway, that is how a jump to subroutine works in RS Logics 500 demonstrated in Logics Pro. I hope this helped.